Everything's bigger in Texas. Ten gallon hats, ribs, and complaining about an invasion at the southern border. Over the last month, we've seen the Texas National Guard and federal troops in a Texan standoff over razor wire, among other provisions at the southern border. This started when a woman with two children drowned on January 12th near a disputed area of the southern border. The Biden administration would request that Federal Border Patrol cut sections of the razor wire that caused this. This request would be granted by the Supreme Court. Surprisingly, Chief Justice John Roberts and Amy Coney Barrett joined the liberal justices to make this decision. Additionally, Texas had installed a blockade of buoys along the Rio Grande to block people from swimming across it. The Justice Department would sue Texas because federal approval is required to regulate navigatable waterways under the Rivers and Harbors Appropriation Act. Now, in my research, I thought that the razor wire and buoys in the Rio Grande were the same thing and that they were spike-stripped buoys. And with the state our country's in, I did not bat an eye. I seriously thought that Republicans just wanted to shred immigrants with barbed wire so they would drown in a combination of the Rio Grande and their own blood. And I just thought, yeah, that sounds about right. Texas would refuse to take down the wire with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick saying, we're putting up wire everywhere we can. We will continue, we will not stop. If they cut it, we will replace it. This has resulted in our current situation with the Texas National Guard and federal border patrol agents in their current standoff. Texas is not the only state now partaking in this dispute. Thirteen other Republican governors, including Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, are saying that they will aid Texas in their fight. Kemp specifically said that he would send troops to the border for the second time, with the first being in 2019. Governor Mike Parson announced just this week that 200 troops will be deployed to the southern border. With all these troops and standoffs and beef going around, the media did what it absolutely loves to do, tease about some bullshit. Is America headed for a civil war? So normally states have what's called comedy, where they sort of respect one another's laws. This is the opposite. And when I spoke to legal experts about this, they said the only analog in our history is the decade before the Civil War, when Congress in 1850 passed the Fugitive Slave Act. And and you conclude that the U.S. is, quote, closer to civil war than any of us would like to believe. The notion that there's going to be a civil war in our country today is absolutely crazy. The news only wants to throw civil war out there to get our eyes on this largely stupid publicity stunt. However, fear not, a new bill would come around that included border security that would pay the salaries of border security officers, increase detention camp capacities, and would make it harder to seek asylum. Uh, Additionally, it would increase screenings for illegal drugs, among many other things that would make this bill one of the most extreme border security laws passed in years. The bill additionally includes aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, and money for humanitarian aid for civilians in Ukraine and Gaza. Now, you and I can have our own opinions on the contents of this bill, but it seems as though the Republicans have been served exactly what they want on a silver platter. Even Mitch McConnell said himself the bill includes, and I quote, direct and immediate solutions to the crisis at the southern border. So what did the Republicans do in response to this surprising bill of bipartisan cooperation? They shot it down in the Senate, and Mike Johnson said that the House would instead be voting on a bill that was aid exclusively for Israel and would impeach Alejandro Mayorkas, the Homeland Security Secretary, for not securing the southern border. I will say that if it's anything like the Joe Biden impeachment inquiries, it will go absolutely nowhere and be really stupid. So why did this bill end up getting rejected? It all boils down to our coming presidential election. Trump has encouraged Republicans to reject any border deal unless we get everything. Mitch McConnell would retract his previous statements about the bill in a closed-door meeting where he said that Trump's rise and his hostility to the agreement was putting the party in a quandary. Donald Trump has said that he does not want to be Herbert Hoover, while at the same time causing his party to do nothing about an issue he calls serious. Doing nothing about a crisis seems a lot like Herbert Hoover to me. This all just shows that Donald Trump has a real stronghold over our current Republican Party from outside the Oval Office. In an effort to fight these political mind games from Trump, it's rumored that Joe Biden is currently debating invoking executive authority to crack down the southern border, according to ABC. The law is called 212F and allows the president to suspend the entry of foreigners that the arrival of is not in the best interest of the country. Donald Trump used this law frequently to ban immigrants from Muslim countries. According to sources, we will find out about his decision within the next two weeks. 
However, if he does opt to implement it, lawsuits seem to be inevitable. Lee Gerlarent, an American Civil Liberties Union lawyer who successfully convinced federal judges to halt the Trump administration's asylum ban, indicated his group would likely sue the government again if Mr. Biden issued a similar order. This situation seems very much like a damned if you do, damned if you don't type deal. If Biden doesn't take action, his opposition will accuse him of being soft. And if he does, they'll still find fault, claiming his actions are insufficient in some way. I believe that if Biden goes through with this, it'll be a clear political move to aid his re-election campaign. The southern border has been cited by many as one of his weak spots, and this seems like a clear attempt to save face and appear strong. I think this will further anger the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, but I really don't think Joe Biden cares about what they believe, with his continued aid to Israeli military operations, despite their disapproval. What I think Biden really has to worry about is how this will impact how he's viewed by young voters, who tend to identify more with the progressive wing of the party. It's just going to make them say Genocide Joe more. The Biden campaign was really something special for its time, and I and many others are starting to seriously doubt if he can catch that lightning in a bottle again. I hope to get more into my 2024 election predictions sometime in the future, likely after Super Tuesday, but I think when it comes to Biden and the border, he's seriously having trouble defining a position on it, and his opposition is seriously weaponizing that against him.